Hello, everyone. Uh, today, we're going to cover living on the edge with focus on DCN networking. I'm Anita Tragler. I'm a product manager for networking at Red Hat. And I'm Bernard Caffarelli, I'm principal engineer on networking, also at Red Hat and working with Anita. So let's dive into uh, DCN Edge, distributed compute node networking, and look at some high-level use cases and requirements. When we're using DCN, we have centralized control and distributed edge sites with compute nodes. The goal is to transition applica applications closer to the user and to reduce the fault domain, lower latency. For these types of use cases, we have um, industrial IoT and retail customer premises equipment type uh, vendors who are interested in this. There's also a use case for, for time sensitive sensitive applications moving to the edge side. This is to minimize latency. Examples of these are gaming, AR, VR, smart cars, robotics, AIML, as well as NFV, telco use cases for VRAN and the, and the mobile edge computing applications. In this case, we also have for NFV, high throughput applications for mobile packet core that are also looking to move to conserve bandwidth and move applications more to the edge. With edge use cases, the nodes typically have smaller footprints with less number of NICs and a requirement for hyperconverged infrastructure with storage. These are uh, the typical needs are for retail and industrial IoT, as well as you have a need for deploying uh, at specific sites using availability zones and composable roles to pick whether you want HCI or non-HCI, and the hardware performance needs. For example, if you're doing high-performance computing at the edge, the types of hardware that you need, whether you need GPUs, ASICs, FPGAs, smart mix for bandwidth sharing. And now we will cover telco edge NFE use cases and dive more deep into the requirements and the architecture. For the telco edge, we will now look at the control plane and the provisioning networks. In this use case, the central sites are typically connected to edge sites via SD-WAN and L3 routing. Uh, routed networks are a key cornerstone for this use case. And our deployment will be more like a finally for hub and spoke type deployment, where each site has its own segment or VLAN subnet and for each different network type, whether you're using provisioning, control plane storage, so you will have a separate subnet and segment for each of these. Another big requirement is encryption across uh, central to edge sites for API and storage management. Uh, edge sites are typically identified by host aggregate or availability zones to ensure deployment is in the right site. IP address management is a key requirement. DHCP services over L3 networks, over L3 routed networks is a, is a must have. And IPv6 addressing is required as well since we're running out of address space on the IPv4. So more customers are looking for IPv6, especially for provisioning control plane and storage. Okay. so. Now to dive a bit deeper into some of these components. So talking first about the controllers. So we regroup them on the central site, mostly to have a good HA between all of them. So we need a layer two connectivity. So with pacemaker and, and uh, fencing with IPAB power management for failure. So we group these controllers on the central side that you can see on the left of this ring. And then we've got uh, multiple provisioning network, like provisioning internal API storage that will uh, allow to provision all, all the uh, nodes on the edge sites. So we have a concept we you call a supernet where one pair network, so either IPv4, or IPv6, uh, you, can, you can choose, but you cannot uh, do both at the same time, which is not a major drawback because this is really limited to provisioning uh, network, not to the data plane. And in this in the supernet, which would be like in this example, in IPv4, it's 101.1.0.0. .1 .0 .0. Then you will have a separate subnets per site, 
0.0 for the central, 0.1.0 for the first leaf side, 2.0 for the second side, etc. And so on for internal strains. And uh, one of the things that we have to watch out when we do provisioning is uh, how to manage the IP addresses on the remote sites because the HCP is a layer two protocol. So it does not travel natively outside of the central site. So because we do not have open stack nodes already in place to do some DHCP agents or provisioning, we use a DHCP relay that will forward the, forward the DHCP request and replies back and forth between the central site and the uh, edge sites. Or if you if your VF allows it, you can you can use uh, directly config drive and it will self configure itself with what's stored in this configuration. Next slide, please. So continuing on this uh, bare metal provisioning, so we we mentioned the, the word uh, routine network before, but we are using it, of course, also for provisioning network. So here is again another simplified drawing where we've got this supranet, and then we split with uh, on subnets per site, and uh, we have uh, on on sorry on the control plane API and storage. So already mentioned IPv4, IPv6, but you can also provision with IPv6 and do some pixie boot in the HTTPv6. Um, you can do it with ML2 VS or VN, which are net network backends uh, we usually use. Uh, one caveat for VN bare metal is that you need a, a DHCP layer 2 agent running which is kind of makes sense because you do not have OVN already running to relay uh, uh, OVN uh, DHCP uh, services. And of course, as we mentioned, it's better to have uh, TLS everywhere enabled for encryption as you are running across different sites and or maybe unsecure networks. So encryption with TLS everywhere. Next slide. All right, let's now dive into some data plane um, network support with provider networks. Our goal is to orchestrate VNFs at specific edge sites with using uh, Nova availability zones. And your data plane traffic is mostly north-south and should be restricted to the edge site. We have support uh, for, we need support for dual stack for provider networks. Since all VNFs may not support IPv6, in our use case that we're showing right now, uh, we have a provider network with dual stack support and the VNF has some interfaces, SRIOV data plane interfaces using IPv6 and the management interface using IPv4. So we need the ability to have a dual stack deployments for these type of use cases. Network segmentation is also crucial. We need to be able to have separate subnets for each edge site and provide isolation uh, between edge sites. Distributed and site local services are a must for, for DHCP and metadata. Can be done using neutron availability zones or using distributed services. We also need distributed DHCP services for SRIOV. On the fast data path options for high throughput and low latency, we need use cases where you could support SRIOV VFs. This is high priority and it's a simpler option. Looking in, in the future, we have a need for OVS TPDK and OVS hardware offload as well, and to use composable rules to identify this. For traffic in our use case here, we have not south traffic coming in from the mobile users traveling over our provider external provider network and then running through the SRIOV ports and coming back out. This is a typical uh, traffic data plane deployment for VNFs at the edge. OK, so giving a bit more details about this provider network. So in this in this drawing that you can see, it's uh, middle right or provider network. So what we call the uh, in our definition, a provider network is usually an admin managed network that is externally routed via, via the fabric, the top of rack switches, the gateway. So 
that's not that's not a self service or isolated network. It needs to be physically connected to the real world. So as we said, it's uh, this one of course is for the data plane for the user. So it can be IPv4, IPv6, or mixed and dual stack because sometimes you do not have yet IPv6 support, so you need to support both. And similarly to the control plane, you may also need the HCP services in your edge site, which is represented here. So you can use what, uh, what was possible before with uh, the HCP relay, but that's not really um, a robust uh, way of doing it. With ML2VS, you can, you can do it with um, site local services, like you deploy DHCP agents and also metadata agents per site. So they, have, uh, they are local to the site. And uh, if, you, if you do use uh, OVN, then it has a built-in uh, DHCP. So it is integrated in the OVN nodes. And also, so talking about OVN, so we have got a distributed IP6 DHCP services, so stateless, stateful, and Slack, with a small caveat that is still under investigation. Uh, OVN by itself is not fully uh, available. It is on aware very small restriction while you use RSIOV. Okay. And now let's look at um, provider network segmentation, being able to support separate segments and subnets per edge site. As we said earlier, connection between edge and central sites is via external routing, typically SD-WAN, MPLS VPN, BGP options. It is not, we don't have a stretched L2 network, but multiple externally routed L3 segments. Each edge site needs to have its own network segment and needs to work independently and have their own subnets, which could be dual stack. One option is to put a provider network for every edge site, but this results in a scaling issue and it will require you to configure uh, the same provider network on, on all the cent on central controllers. Instead, what was uh, an option that was selected is router provider networks, where you have a single provider network and multiple segments, and each segment per edge. And then you should have the ability to re replicate that segment, VLAN segment, across sites so that you can support site replication for IoT, industrial IoT use cases and uh, retail use cases. You want to also be able to support site local or segment local services with DHCP and metadata specifically. And your traffic should stick to your central site and ha have distributed or site local services. So we talked uh, already quite a bit about routine provider networks. So we wanted to give a small recap slide on what they are. So before before in OpenStack and Neutron in general, a network was a, a, lay, a layer two continuous network, like it's to be Ethernet connectivity everywhere, basically. But uh, now now you can use a routine provider networks, which has been around for some time, but are quite well adapted to edge side because these are a layer three network composed of layer two segments connected between them via out, outside of OpenStack uh, routing. So you can see it's, it's aligned quite well to the edge topology and we have um, in this segment definition, which is uh, just a physical network name, a segmentation type and a VLA, uh, an ID almost LVLAN because you can say, for example, a good uh, typical example would be provider one uh, VLAN and VLAN ID uh, 2016 or something like that. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, I said, these are well adapted for this kind of large scale deployments uh, like Edge. Uh, routed provider networks are supported with ML2 OVS and SIOV. Uh, we added OVN support in the Victoria cycle. You will have the links uh, in the presentation. So we have a few limitations on it, but nothing major. Like you can only have one segment, uh, typically VLAN ID or a ph physical network name per provider network per node, which is not really blocking because you wouldn't, in most situations, you will not have uh, multiple uh, multiple physical networks on the on the same uh, node on the same compute node. 
Uh, for SIOV, you cannot reuse uh, the segment ID across sites, so you need to use uh, un unique VLAN IDs. And for, uh, for DPDK, we have another restriction, which is we do not directly support DHCP services like using a DHCP agent uh, running locally. Uh, it, it, it would work, but it would have uh, a big performance impact. So in that case, use config drive uh, or use a separated DHCP agent. And OVN, OVS, uh, DPDK is still work in progress. And finally, for for routed provider networks work fine for no, north south traffic as well as, as was shown by Anita. But if you want uh, routing between north south and some uh, self service tenant network, which is east west, where it would need central SNAT or floating IPs, this is not supported yet in routed provider networks. There is work in progress, uh, maybe for a Wallaby cycle. Next slide. And we also have some uh, limitations on the Nova scheduler part because OT provider networks is a feature with some interaction between Neutron and Nova. Currently, if you use uh, SIOV or PCI pi through, so you have to uh, you have to use the same physical network names in the central and the remote site. You can you cannot reuse segment IDs, well, which is not too bad either because it will be easier to find uh, where which site is uh, belongs to which uh, uh, network. Uh, and uh, Nova Scheduler so is not segment aware, so you've got, you've got to map carefully between, um, between subnet segment and Nova VBT zones, but I will detail that a bit later. So I listed here the two modes that where you can boot VMs with Nova currently when using Nova, uh, when using routed provider networks. And in a, you, with, for similar reasons, uh, call and live migrations will only work if you specify uh, the destination navigability zone. It will not work magic, uh, magically. But don't despair because all of these are in progress uh, on the Nova side. So the specification itself was merged uh, during the Victoria cycle and implementation is in progress. So expect it uh, in, um, in an upcoming release. Next slide. Okay, so I talked quite a bit already about IVBT zone. So here is a, here is some there are some more additional details because IVBT zones in OpenStack is a, a big subject, and most projects have uh, their own definitions. So important here for our case, we have uh, Nova IVBT zones, which are the user-facing interface to host aggregates. So host aggregates is a, a group of compute node uh, when you, that you regroup in an availability zone, which will be in our case an edge site usually. So it's required for to schedule VMs on the correct edge site. You don't want them to spawn on the on the other side of the country, and also for performance optimization like image caching. Neutron has, uh, of course, also have availability zones on, with two to concept network and router. The network one is to group network nodes that run the services. So for ML2 VS, it's mostly DHCP and the layer free agent. And also to pro for provider networks to, uh, to scale for scheduling int within VASs. And you also have the router availability zones uh, for uh, to, <coughs> sorry, to um, to give also these ends, but for the router, so the layer three. And Cinder also has a bit VT zones for storage, but these are, you, if you are curious about uh, this other concept, uh, I suggest uh, you, you join. We have another presentation uh, more focused on storage and uh, DCN and edge uh, uh, topic. Next slide. Okay, so I'm mostly mentioned ML2 VS in the previous slides. So what about OVN? So here I listed the, the mentioned uh, extensions for Neutron. So you see we've got two, which are mostly for display, then network LBT zone, then water. Uh, for network, OVN has built-in distributed DHCP support. It's running inside the OVN uh, agent. So that one is good. And we added uh, 
the router availability zone uh, uh, support for VN in the Victoria cycle we review is here. And also, yeah, as we mentioned before, we, we have uh, small limitations for SIOV plus OVN plus DHCP, as we don't have, uh, as OVN uses a concept called external ports for this case, which is not aware yet of the network availability zones. So that one is still um, in progress. Next slide. All right, let's look at um, telco edge requirements for QoS and bandwidth sharing. Edge nodes, as we said, will have a small fit footprint and typically have only a single NIC with two ports with bonding enabled. And if you're using 100 gig, for example, you can't be dedicated. In most cases, you have to share the bandwidth with different network types. There is a new feature called NIC partitioning that allows you to distribute SLIO VVFs across network types. And these network types are control plane for SSH, SNMP, as well as storage, control plane VNFs, VNF management, and data plane VNFs. The goal is to be able to protect also from noisy neighbors and to guarantee a minimum bandwidth so that your data plane VNFs do not steal all the bandwidth from your control plane and API, and your API networks are not starved. And also, we want to make sure the Nova scheduler is not overcommitting the NIC. So the VNFs uh, are expected to declare their minimum bandwidth, and then Nova will schedule uh, using bandwidth-aware scheduling. So yeah, the partitioning says another way of uh, bandwidth sharing. So you can distribute the VFs, uh, the SIO VFs across the network type. We can we have bonding support, but it's limited uh, as marked to active backup. So LACP bonding itself requires a single speaker. Uh, we've got a minimum bandwidth support now. We uh, support it for SIOV per VF. So that's minimum bandwidth. But if you want maximum bandwidth, uh, we are. This one is still in progress for VN. We have some patches merged in the Victoria cycle, but some are still in progress. Same. And let's look at telco uh, edge DCN options. Today, the highest priority is SRIOV. We have VNF vendors uh, looking to deploy with SRIOV. And this is a simple, easy to deploy first option. It's already production ready and mature and will give the VNF vendors the latency and performance needs that they need. Uh, but it has limited feature set, no live migration, I live migration with hot plug unplug, but no switching and no um, data path switching capabilities, security groups, et cetera. OVS DPDK and OVS hardware offload are the next future ones that are needed. And um, they will provide the switching capabilities, the SLA guarantees, as well as zero loss and management options an option to fall back to um, the vSwitch for switching or hardware offload with OVS hardware offload. Yeah, basically, yeah, OVS hardware offload has a, has a lot of promises because with all offloaded flows, you almost get a bare metal SIOV performance. You can fall back to the kernel data pass so if you have got capacity issues or if you cannot offload, typically for control plane or DHCP request, this kind of stuff. Uh, you get you get a rate limiting per VF. So lots lots of good of good promises, but it's still hard and complex to deploy. You've got limited hardware support for now, and uh, not all features are supported. But it is promising. Next slide. Now let's look at industrial IoT edge requirements and architecture. Um, the main goal here is to reduce the fault domain to the edge side and to be able to replicate and reuse a deployment across different factory or retail edge sites. So in this use case, you have both provider, router provider networks for external connectivity, as well as the need for tenant self-service networks for east-west uh, traffic capabilities. And in this case as well, you want to be able to replicate your VLANs and your segments and restrict your overlays only to your edge sites. Take a, take a look at 
our deployment here, we have a router provider network with a, a VLAN at this site. And then we have floating IPs for our instances um, identified. And we have two instances here. We have an IoT VM on one node and a database VM on another node. And traffic coming in from, from the uh, edge side, from the retail side, needs to go to the IoT VM, which in turn will pass data to the database uh, VMs with some east-west traffic. So we have north-south traffic coming in and east-west traffic going over an overlay between IoT and DB um, VMs. For this use case, the need is to have, again, distributed routing and DHCP services at the site, local nodes, and you, 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 you also want to have your, if there is significant amount of routing, your network nodes and your gateway, OVN gateway nodes scheduled on the same site. Each edge site is independent. And if there is network connectivity issues or disconnection temporarily from the central sites, we want them to, the edge sites to continue uh, working independently and reconnect later. OK, so as mentioned, IoT, uh as a key difference to uh, uh, our previous use case is that we have more self-service networks. So this is typically east-west and fully encapsulated. So things like SLAN or, or Genius tunnels everywhere. Uh, that's also some requirements like the latency to central site should be below 100 milliseconds. Think, uh, think for example, of autonomous cars. You do not want the lag to be too long uh, if the car has to query, make a query to a central site. Uh, so same for resilience. You do not want uh, you do not want the car to crash if it has network issues or entering a tunnel. Um, we also have so current currently limitation that we still do a full mesh of Geneva or VXLAN tunnels between all the nodes. We do not limit them between availability zones or the needed compute compute nodes. And uh, we, uh, we still uh, we also need, if we have a temporary connectivity loss to a central site, we also need to recover properly. So you have to configure a check and proper timeouts. And uh, OVN also has an advantage here with incremental processing where it can recover better by using, getting a, a full diff of what happened between uh, before and after uh, disconnection time and recover quickly. Okay. And to quickly summarize what we've got today with the DCN edge, we have control plane provisioning with support for IPv6, as well as routed spine leaf deployments with supernets and DHCP relays as, that, as Bernard covered. And then we have telco data plane provider network options specifically for telco, dual stack capabilities, router provider networks with segmentation, um, support for availability zone scheduling, fast data path SRIOV, as well as OVS DPDK and OVS hardware offload coming soon, um, distributed services for DHCP as well as SRIOV, DHCP services encryption with TLS everywhere, NIC partitioning and QoS bandwidth guarantees and bandwidth aware scheduling. For industrial IoT, we're adding two more requirements for self service networks as well as distributed routing at um, site local routing services. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you.